Today on The Hookup, we're going to look at some unique smart switches and their non-standard use cases that will hopefully inspire you and open up some new options in your smart home. When purchasing a smart switch, you have a lot of different options for manufacturers, protocols, and apps. But in the US, pretty much all the switches are either the strange glass front switches or your standard decor style. And while these switches work exactly as advertised, they don't really open up any new possibilities, except of course for the remote operation of the switch. Today, we're going to look at a couple unique switches made by ZemiSmart. We're going to look at their advantages and their shortcomings. And then I'm going to show you how I utilize them in my house. The first product we're going to look at has a PIR motion sensor, a night light, and of course a push button switch. Out of the box, this switch works with the Tuya app or the Smart Life app, but I use the Tuya convert method to flash the custom Tasmoda firmware onto it to increase both its security and its functionality. In my house, I use this light in a detached three-way configuration. This means that two light switches can be used to control a single light. But unlike a traditional three-way configuration, the two light switches are not physically connected to each other by a wire. Instead, one switch sends the other one information via rules in the Tasmoda firmware. In this specific case, the light is physically controlled by the relay in the motion sensing switch, but it would have worked fine the other way around also. Using Tasmoda, I have the PIR motion sensor linked to my home assistant so that I can use that information for both automations and security. I've also set up the built-in green LED in the switch as a virtual relay so that I can use it as a visual indicator that our security system is armed or not armed. As for the performance of the switch, I've been really happy with the motion sensing, and it reports significantly less false positives than the battery-operated RF motion sensors that I used to have. But I can't help to think how much better this switch could have been. On the top of the switch, there's a manual toggle with the words off, auto, and LED. The first mode, off, disables the motion sensor, causing the device to behave exactly like every other smart switch on the market, meaning you can toggle the relay from the built-in button, from an automation, or from the web interface. It's not exactly revolutionary or unique. The second mode activates the PIR motion sensor which is unfortunately connected to the exact same input on the microcontroller as the toggle switch. This means that there's no way to differentiate between pressing the button and a motion event. This is a logical situation if all you wanted to do was keep the lights on as long as there's motion, but it really reduces the potential functionality for those who want to use a custom firmware. In Tasmoda, the switch can be detached from controlling the relay so that you can utilize the motion sensor and the relay independently. But that means that the toggle switch does become unusable. I'm happy to have a switch with built-in motion detection, but it would have been so much better if the switch and the motion sensor were on two different GPIO pins. That way you could use the motion sensor and the toggle switch independently. The third mode, LED, disables the motion sensor and it turns on an LED nightlight that only activates when the room is dark. It's another cool feature that I'm happy to have, but why isn't this built into the smart functionality? As it stands right now, the only way to switch between the three modes is to flip the physical switch on the faceplate. Why aren't these things connected to GPIO pins that are just sitting in the switch unused? This switch obviously has a photoresistor in it to activate the nightlight. Why not tie that to an analog pin on the ESP8266 and give the user luminosity data? Why not activate the nightlight with motion or give the user the ability to toggle the nightlight remotely? Like I said, I like this switch and it works exactly as advertised, but to me, it maybe feels like this was a product that already existed in another form, and then they just slapped the Tuya module and a relay on it and called it a smart switch. Still, for $30, it serves a unique role that's not covered by any other product on the market, so I'm going to give it a thumbs up. The next product we're going to look at is maybe my favorite smart switch on the market. These switches are incorrectly listed as 2-gang and 3-gang, but what they actually mean is that they have two or three independent switches in a single gang size. Unfortunately, these switches are not the US standard Decora form factor. Instead, I believe these are similar to what they have in Australia, but I could be wrong. They fit perfectly in a single gang US socket, and they look very nice with the included cover. But if you want to install them in a multi-gang switch panel, you're going to run into some troubles. Just like the motion sensor switch, these lights are designed to work with the Tuya app or the Smart Life app. But I, of course, used the Tuya convert method to switch them to the Tasmoda custom firmware. In my house, I don't have any single gang switches that have more than one circuit in them. But that doesn't mean that I don't have a use for multiple switches. 
In Tasmoda, it's really easy to control another device using a switch input. And if you have a home automation platform like Home Assistant, you can easily set up different scenes and tie them to each button. This allows you to control things like smart light bulbs without having to use an app on your phone or turning the power physically on and off. I also use these switches to combine three single switches in a three gang box into a single switch so that I can add a standard USB receptacle to the open gang. This was perfect for adding a receptacle to my desk where I can plug in my soldering iron and for adding an outlet next to our countertop peninsula for our charging station. Unfortunately, because this is an Australian style switch, you won't be able to go to Home Depot and buy a switch plate with one Decora opening and one Australian opening. But if you have a 3D printer, I've created a switch plate that includes a single Australian opening and a single Decora opening. I've said it a few times now, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it again. A 3D printer is one of the most important tools that a maker can have these days. And the quality is amazing for the price. I'm gonna put a link down in the description to the $180 printer that I use to print these switch covers. And they look great. It's totally worth the investment. I also included a switch cover for the two gang box, but you should be aware that the two gang installation is going to require some significant modifications, including cutting off the plastic from one side of the switch and using the side screws to secure the switch to the wall instead of screwing it into the electrical box with the center screws. As I mentioned before, these may be my favorite smart switches on the market. Not only do they look great and open up new possibilities, but I also love the way that they sound. Most cheap smart switches these days have a muffled thud noise when you press them because they use a single toggle button that's soldered to the PCB. But these switches have a very satisfying mechanical click caused by actual springs and levers in the housing. The mechanical click is also indicative of the rest of the build quality of these switches. The terminal blocks are high quality and secure, and overall the unit just feels incredibly well built. If these multi-switches came in the Decora form factor, I would declare them the best smart switches on the market and recommend them without reservation. But as it stands, you should be aware that they do have some limitations. Most importantly, they will not fit side by side with standard Decora style switches without modification. And you'll need a 3D printer if you want a switch plate larger than the single gang plate that's included in the box. Also in the US, anytime you combine multiple switches into one, you need to make sure that the wires in your electrical box all come from a single phase. Mixing up circuits from different electrical phases is a major no-no. As always, if you have questions about these switches or anything else in the video, go ahead and leave them down in the comments section. Sorry for a bit of a short video this week, I've been doing a lot of experimentation and failure in these last two weeks, and as a result, I have three half-finished projects that I'm making videos about. I've also been working on the bigger videos that I hinted at in my channel update video. I've got all of my gear ready for my secure IoT network overhaul, and I've purchased all the contestants for my PoE security camera showdown. Let me know if I missed any great PoE camera brands, and I'll buy them so that I can include them in the review as well. Thank you to all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel, and making it so my wife doesn't give me a hard time about spending $500 on PoE cameras for a review video. If you're interested in supporting my channel, you can check out the links down in the description. I've also started to do some purely written reviews on my website, so if you're interested in hearing what I have to say about various smart home and technology products, check out my website and follow me on Twitter to keep up to date. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.